everyone? You're watching my good friend, me, the Stupid Genius 55. Well, I'm more more that I'm your host, but this is uh, my fourth attempt at doing a Let's Play of a series of point-and-click flash games on Newgrounds called Ghost Motel. It takes place in, well, I mean, I'll, it's kind of a spoiler if I, sort of a spoiler if I kind of explain what's going on, but... As you can see, we're entering a ghost motel. I guess you will just assume what you will about that at first, and... Hey, not making any sense here, but... This was created by uh, a user called Violet-AIM, or I don't know if you pronounce that Violet-AIM, because those last three letters are all in capitals, but... Here's the first little bit of interactivity you're gonna get in this... Well, in a second, you're gonna get the first little bit of interactivity in the game. Um, and it also might have been cre created... Well, first of all, these first two options don't make any sense, but... There's a user called uh, X, Wayne Colt X, both X's are capitalized, and he's supposed to be the co-creator, but um, Violet Aim uh, uh, claimed that um, that wasn't, he didn't actually do anything, but his, he, he's, cr like, he maliciously labeled himself as a co-creator when he wasn't. However, it looks clearly in the credits that he's d done some of the voices. Basically, all the male characters he voiced, and uh, well, most of them, and most of the female characters Violet Aim voiced. So I, I think he could count as co-creator, but maybe she means like that he didn't really do much in the way of, um, like a programming the game actually. But uh, you know, me and I gibberish. Well, not really gibberish, it just didn't really... I wasn't fair to Violet Aim, I guess. So, um, these first two episodes aren't really that interactive. You usually just get an option to say, look at this picture, but you really don't do anything. It, it might as well have just been a movie with a few interactions. Um, Violet Aim actually claimed that, uh, this was made in 2002, so, you know, if you're wondering, like, if for a second there you thought that this might have been, like, something done now, and, and that was just really horrible quality, no, it's just... 2002, but it was, it was started out in 2001, and apparently it was just a project that she sort of finished, she, she had done quite a bit, but then she just didn't finish it until like a year later, like she just dropped it for a year. And, by the way, get used to this. Useless options, go back to your room. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't seem uh, useless now, but you just come right back out, you'll see. By the way, this is, um, co Post commentating, which I know some people don't like. I'm sorry if that's if you're one of those people, but uh, there's some cuts I do, and I feel that it would be. And plus, it's a point and click game. Aside from like one part, it's gonna be mostly me. Um, you know, I don't really. It's not really like much reflexes or anything that would really give me reactions that are. Like I don't really think uh, I need to be out there doing um, nothing. anything. So, yeah, but, like, so, so far we had, like, a first, like, couple scenes where you have to choose the right dialogue option before you progress. Um, the first one's really obvious, but... Second one, I guess this one, well, still obvious, but... Now this, what's gonna happen here won't really make sense in the content, in the universe of this, uh, series, because, well... Yeah, he chokes him, but he's a ghost. And they do explain uh, how demons are able to hurt ghosts, but y you can't kill um, him. Well, then he was sleeping. Actually, that might be make sense, making sense, but it doesn't really involve a demon choking uh, a ghost exactly, so it's a bit weird. Um, who are you? As I said, though, this is was a series I actually really loved. By the way, guess how you find the answer to the like, figure out what he's saying. You know, it's not like you'll just read it backwards or anything. This is a series I actually really into as a kid, and uh, if you couldn't guess from my sort of snarky tone now, I'm not quite as keen on it. Ah, uh, you know, it's, it's a point-and-click game, it's a little bit... It's kind of got some issues, which I'll show. And I, I, it, a lot of effort seems to have gone into this, so, you know... I don't, I don't like ragging on games, but because, you know, it does take a, a lot to make one, but... Uh, there are some problems. Plus, it's a pretty old one, too, I mean. Now, go I should probably mention that Ghost Motel 12. Yeah, another useless option. Um, going to lobby. And then... 
Yeah, go to the lobby this for real this time. Yeah, you can go back in there, but sorry, um, I'm mentioning that. Actually, there's a bit of exposition here, so better. Help! Help! I just saw a monster in another room. Eh, I think you just saw your first demon. Hey, wait a second. I thought this place was just for ghosts. We live in the spiritual realm, and it is inhabited by both ghosts and spirits. A ghost is a spiritual being that once had a physical body and was once born in flesh. A spirit is a being that has never lived a physical life. They were born a spirit and will always be a spirit. There are good spirits and bad spirits. The good ones usually don't bother anyone. The bad spirits do evil things and are referred to as demons. Now, the weird thing about what he said there is that he mentioned good spirits and bad spirits. We see the demons, but the good spirits he mentions, for some reason, they're never to be seen. Um, it's like throughout the entire series. Well, here's another bit of. Are you going to town? Um, story Why would I go to town for? Can By the way, look on the left way? there. How Why come they uh, those aren't for? straight lines? Like, look at how that's drawn. I mean, look, like the window that's on the left. I mean, okay, like, like, come on, that's like nearly inexcusable. It was 2002, but I'm, I'm not sure if this is the standard. I'm, I'm but yeah, we basically the gist is that we need to get a job, and that God apparently sets this whole thing up because this is purgatory, and that it, you have to earn your way back to, up to heaven for the job. I guess so. Well, then why are you here? I don't want to talk about it right now. Come on, enough chatting. Let's go. Now, um, there's something I should mention that there was a Ghost Motel episode 12, because this uh, thing will cover episodes 1 to 11, but... It's, uh, sorry, I meant to say that they haven't made a Ghost Motel 12 yet, um, and I, if that ever happens, I don't know, I guess I'll update it with that, but it's been years, like, seven or, seven or eight now, um, the last one was made in 2005, I think. And in 2010, though, Violet Aim made a post on Newgrounds, and... She Wait, apparently is cl she tried she claimed that it's not actually um dead. Well, she she just plugged the first 11 uh, episodes and then and, and then said that she's working on it. Um but in a comment in that wow, that's really mature of you. <laughs> game, but they hinted at a love interest which um spoiler alert never materializes, but that that's a big that's I guess one of the problems with the story here along with the fact that the characters are kind of flat. It's they, they kind of hint at stuff, like, th there's a lot of scenes that go nowhere, basically. Not the worst, it's, it's not a horrible story, though, it's kind of enjoyable. Um, I enjoyed it back in the day, and it's kind of, like, when I was about eight or so, and it was... And yeah, you know, it's kind of okay. And by the way, look at the Friedrich Nietzsche, like, ghost walking behind them, or floating behind them. Which, by the way, later on, they don't float, they just sort of... At least not in the physical, the spiritual realm. But yeah, Violet Aim claims that, uh... Hi, what can I do for you? She had a Ghost Motel 12, um... Well, she completed it, she, she made some of it, but she never completed it. Um, I don't know if she's still working on one, but I'd say it's more or less, um... Not very likely at this point, but... So I'm just gonna... Now, the, now getting back to the game, uh... I guess I'll just go over some of these jobs. Guardian Angel is just, um... A vague protecting of all humans. <laughs> I, I don't see, like, just solving the world's problems. This is more specific. You basically just scare humans away from residents that are evil, that have evil have happened at them, and then, well, my wonderful speaking. But, yeah, uh, the places where demons are, basically. A local worker, just anyone who works in the spiritual realm, doing stuff. A miracle worker, this is a really vague one. Um... You have to grant miracles to those who need it, and you need experiences like everything else, so... And a demon hunter. This is the most straightforward. You just hunt demons as a demon hunter. And by the way, the last part where it says putting them in the pits of hell where they came from, weirdly enough, despite so many scenes that go nowhere, that offhand comment actually is significant later, but... I see. 
Yeah, you know, Joseph, maybe you should have read the part where it asks for certain experience, like requirements. Okay, what kind of job can I have then? How about to start you off on something easy? The local jobs are already filled. Please, how about we start you off as a resident hunt? Okay. Here's your first assignment. So the basic gist of this is that we have to scare away a mother and a daughter moving to an apartment where a lot of evils happen, so demons are hanging out there, so we just gotta scare them away. So let's see what kind of puzzles we have to solve in order to, like, you know, diffuse the situation. Let's see what kind of heroic feats Joseph must do. The, uh... So he walks really slowly, or floats really slowly. This is a bit, another bit of a problem now. Now that I look back at it, um, this is kind of the pr a big problem here is that he's walking really slowly, and I haven't really noticed it until. Where do you want to go? Now. I want to go to the Delano apartment number fifty-one. Okay. Are you still typing? Like, what do you need? You didn't even you didn't even type in a different like pattern in order to open that portal. So. And here's where it becomes a game. Technically. Yep, that's the interaction. That's that's all you do. Just click the go thing. Do you even need that? Because all you get here is this cutscene. As I said, it isn't until episode 4 that you start getting the inter the, you know, interact, to actually interact with the characters. Hey, Although, I guess if you're just watching this for the first time, you won't really know which episode is which. Stop playing with that Ouija board. For some reason, they don't have the speech bubbles anymore. Don't you know you're playing with a demon? Um, so, you know, um, it's too dangerous for uh, a, an inexperienced ghost to hunt demons, but, you know, walking around them and the demons that can, you know, potentially harm him. You know, that that's okay. Uh-huh. That's not too dangerous. Um The Sweet Cafe, what a an inspired name. I failed my first no. That little girl got possessed. I wasn't able to stop her from Yeah, some seems like they can do some pretty dangerous stuff. You know, but you, so in an inexperienced this is a good thing to start off with, you know. Alright, with enough of the sarcasm, um Actually, uh, um, first of all, what, what's the significance of those tears? Just you know, lowering into the cup. Oh. What's wrong, Joseph? You look a little bit. Well, I just failed my first mission, so that's why I'm a little blue. Oh, don't worry about it. I it failed my first mission, so that is why I am a little blue. I mean, it <laughs> didn't sound right. Really. The voice acting is not as fluid as it could be. Okay, sounds like a good idea. How about we go to the circuit? Okay. I'm happy to see you first. I'll meet you at the circuit. Just take the bus, and I'll get Alright. Bye. So now that we're starting off episode 4 here, you know, now we finally get to start some of the interactivity. So, um, first of all, be sure to take note of that, uh, the color of that umbrella there, because you can't come back here, and we all know, you, you just know it's going to be important. Um, now you think you'd go to the circus, right? You can go to other places, and you're actually supposed to go to these areas first. How are you supposed to know that? I don't know. <coughs> So this is kind of where we get to the not so good aspect. You have to go here first. Technically, you can go to the circus first, but, you, but that's where you're supposed to. The dialogue actually implies that you went to other places first, and then and you need to go to these two places to get clues, including that bus stop. Um, that the very first bus stop in the game, which there's no indication you have any kind of. There's no indication that you have any kind of like. 
that, that, that you need that that's important but um, although it's actually not as bad as some people seem to think it was because apparently according to uh, the description a lot of people uh, the creator was just telling people to start off with the previous episodes first so they'd understand the story and so a lot of people apparently <laughs> thought part. she meant that you're supposed to go to the previous episodes to find the clues and people were apparently complaining about that uh, it's kind of funny, back in 2002 or 3 or whenever this one was made. Um, so anyway, yay to the park, it'll be nice and cheery there, right? Yeah, no, it's actually depraved for no explained reason here. It was like the mu- same- it isn't the same music as the, uh, like, thing the demon, um, from the Ghost Motel. And make sure you take note of the key on the keychain, that is another important thing. And let's see the tail. Nice tail. No, it's a... Wait, when did I become PewDiePie? I never watched PewDiePie, so... <laughs> I don't even know... I, I don't think this is supposed to be like a horror game or anything, but... Um, if it is, it, it's not that scary, but... Yeah, I've never watched PewDiePie. Well, I've watched like a little bit of PewDiePie, so... I don't know if that is what his style is, but... Yeah, I became him for like five seconds. But finally, we're at the circus. Um, we've gotten all the clues we need, because, you know, you'd know what they were from... And the city escape is consists of, you know, a bunch of black buildings that, like, buildings painted back... Painted black, Hi, excuse me, across a, you know, sort of evening sky. Oh no, they're also so um they're also all out of tickets, but of course because she offered to take us here, you know, Tabitha would have at least got taken care of the tickets. Of course. And that spinning thing looks a lot weirder than you'd think it would. Hi, or I I would think Hi, it would at least. What took you so long to get here? Sorry. That's I not a question. A we need tickets to get inside the circus. Do you have any? No, you know, you invited us here, Tabitha. I mean Let me know if you do find any tickets. So now that you get the option to talk to the clown, um, this is kind of where the uh, not so good part gets. Well, me and my speech. I, I'm so. Hi. I yeah, are good at talking now. Um, I want to go inside the circus. Okay, I'm never saying that again, ever. So if you just say no, I don't. No, I don't. Um, I guess maybe I'd expect him to, you know, make you repeat everything, but apparently you can just get up and start talking to him again without any kind of repercussions. Like, he'll he'll just forget about the old inc incident. He's got short-term memory uh, loss, so... And apparently Joseph just intuitively knows he has a free guest pass, or... Would ask him for that specifically, not if you have any tickets. Yeah, I know who you are. And I'm that's this is a, a bit of a weird one. I don't like the fact that he just said, "How many your biggest fans?" Like, I didn't ask him to say that. I just asked him to say, "Yes, I do." So if you guess the wrong one, you're gonna get like um. I'm sorry, that is the wrong answer. Goodbye. But yeah, of course, you know you can just get right back up and talk to him, and it makes you repeat this again, sadly. Hi. <clears throat> do you have a free guest pass I can have? I want to go inside the circus. Yes, I know who you are. And I don't know if it's such a good idea to claim you're one of his biggest fans when you don't <coughs> even know him. Well, I guess from that painting that reveals what his favorite, that the omelets are like the favorite food, but so he sort of knows it. Who he is? <coughs> um, this worry. That's important, and. Why does he ask us this in order to give us, like, to give us a guest pass, I mean? And by the way, this doesn't even imply that, you know, you have to go back to the beginning of the game to see it. Like, I, I, I just went looking for this stupid umbrella and then couldn't find it. But, yeah, it's, um, solving his riddle. No, this is not a riddle. We, we just, that was, like, trivia. And I don't see how you would know, like, why we need to ask that for just to give us a free guest pass, but... Uh, it's probably, you know, kind of... I, I guess this isn't the only game that has a pro someone just, like, for no reason that you just ask some tri answer some trivia questions and they give you something, but... Hey, wait, what about me? I don't know why they give you that option. I don't see why they just, like, have him automatically talk to Tabitha. It's not like you can just go back anywhere at this point, so I don't see why give you that option, but... 
By the way, I hope I'm not being, like, too silent. I, sometimes I kind of shut up just so that you can hear some of the story if you want to. I mean, that technically you can read it, but sometimes I feel the need to blabber on with my, with my witty commentary. You know, so witty that I make fun of myself whenever I, whenever I misspeak or stutter. This scene, I don't know if I'm kind of nitpicking here. Um, well, okay, problem number one, the crowd is unintentionally hilarious. Um, from just the, the way they're drawn, especially the one beside Joseph, who's just so unnecessarily kind of angry. But um, The weird thing is, when you go to watch the show, and you go in to zoom in on one of these attractions, you can't just go back to viewing the whole show. You have to go back to the seat view. Um, like, watch, if you go here, it's like, you, you can't... I, 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 well, the first time I did this, I, okay, and here's another problem. Yeah, Tabitha just disappears, like, in, in an instant, like, he didn't notice anyone come in and take her, like, how, how conceivably could anyone just come in and take her? Or, you know, yeah, run by, like, how did Joseph not notice this, or any of the other ghosts, like, not notice this, ever? We're just so engrossed with those, like, flying trapeze people, ghosts, I mean, come on, it's like... Not unless you know how to survive in the underworld. But I have to go to the underworld. I have to find Tabitha. Who you know for like five... Can you help me? Well, eh, maybe like half an hour, an hour, I'm assuming. I don't know how long that would have taken, but... And yeah, you're just gonna take a random stranger to the underworld. Not call the police, or whatever equivalent you have here, but... Well, I mean, the demon hunters, you're not gonna call any of them, but you just... Do this. Now... Hey, Ray, what are those pink and black crystals in those fields? That is a field of thought forms. Those pink and black crystals you see are thought forms. You see, Joseph, in the physical world, when the humans think things in their minds, they create a thought form, which appears in our spiritual world. Every invisible human thought creates a visible thought form here. Some thoughts or thought forms are positive, which are pink colored while some thoughts or thought forms are negative, which are a black color. Positive thoughts are things related to love, compassion, peace, kindness, happiness, and courage. Negative thoughts are things related to hate, anger, evil, embarrassment, unhappiness, and fear. How do the thought forms affect us in our spiritual world? As you know already, there are ghosts, evil spirits, and good spirits that live in our world. We use the positive thought forms and love to convert them into positive energy, which can be used to fight demons with, while the demons feed on the negative thought forms of hate to make themselves stronger and attack us with the negative energies. But how is it possible for a ghost to get hurt? We are not talking about physical hurt and pain. It's about spiritual or mental pain, much like in a nightmare or a bad dream. For example, when you were once alive, if you felt a horrible sensation in a dream, like fear that could hurt. Usually in that case, when a person has a bad dream, they can just wake up and return to a physical state of being. Whereas in here, the spiritual world, everything we feel here is real. And there is no escape from it, we just have to deal with it. Being alive is easier in a way, since you don't have to deal with your inner feelings, if you don't want to. But those poor selves who commit suicide, they will have a long time to deal with all their feelings, or their so-called demons. Being dead is like being stuck in a dream world. It's like an alternate world, or other dimension. A lot of the things you have in the physical world, are also in the spiritual world. That's why we have cities cars, jobs, and places of entertainment. Hmm, I think I know what you mean. But even though some of the demons you will face might appear to be overwhelming and powerful, don't ever forget that we have the advantage since we fight with love, and love is a greater power than hate. Okay. So sorry I kind of uh, went away there for a second, but 
I kind of wanted to keep the story, like, you know, I didn't want to, like, interrupt. Um, so the underworld is... Yeah, what he said. <laughs> or what he's saying, excuse me. Well, now that I say that, he's done saying that, so... Ugh, right, uh. Yeah, they just hop in, you know, with no way to get back out, and with their tongues sticking out, or they, they were having their tongues stuck out. I don't know. Now, this episode, uh, aside from that opening sequence, is kind of... Okay. It's a, literally a guessing game. And funnily enough, despite the fact that Violet Aim actually tells you, like... Uh, the writing actually tells you, like, not to guess frequently. It actually is some somewhat. Like, let me show you. Where I'm going right now um, is... You see, if you don't go through the right tunnel, it'll take you back to where you were. But then... Uh, despite, it calls it a left tunnel... Now, the far left room here, as you can see, it actually has a map. Now, throughout most of these rooms, well, that, that just shows you which um, is the correct area. And you've probably heard, help me, Joseph, from, ta a ta from Tabitha, you know, her saying that accidentally. Um, now, any room you go in, other than that room or the correct room, and I believe one other room in this whole complex, well, I'll just show yeah, you always die. And when you get into the right tunnel, it doesn't make you investigate it to find out which is the right one. So, like, this, the little per bit of purpose, like, this, like, the sequence, like, once had is not there because, the, the, uh, any challenge is not there because you can completely break it, technically speaking. Now, there is one more tunnel that just doesn't do anything if you look around in it, but... This is the part with the flashing lights, so if you have, uh... Just another reminder, if you have photosensitive epilepsy, well, in shortly, it's going to come into play, so. That was another bit of useless interactivity. Hi, I'm Joseph, and this is my friend Ray. We mean you no harm. We just want to get through the tunnel. Joseph. Hmm. No, I'm not going to let you get through this tunnel. Well, oh wait, sorry, the game tells me for it, tells that for me. No, these aren't the flashing lights it's talking about, it's gonna come up in a quick second. So, your last chance to escape. Here we go. Or, now we go. Um, maybe the way I recorded it, it actually kind of slowed it down. <laughs> I'm not sure, because the part I'm viewing isn't exactly the same as what you'll see, but... Maybe it gets, like, accidentally less bad for you. Uh which would show that I'm not doing a very good job at recording this in terms of technical in terms of you know recording it with uh, a high frame rate <laughs> uh me and my technical limitations oh I thought I got rid of those when I got my new computer but nope I don't set things properly apparently well I mean to be honest like everything else like I, everything else looks okay from my end it's just that one kind of the flashing lights weren't as fast as before, so... Um, him with it, like, I, it was kind of weird how his tongue was just, like, flailing about there. It makes him look kind of stupid, but... Violet Ames, uh, author okay, avatar is dead. Or... I just went through something awful. I don't know what it was. That girl demon just put you in an evil trap. Up, see, like that's what happens so when worry. you get um. I knocked her out, so we can proceed through the tunnel. Like that's what demons do to ghosts. So a bunch of flashing light and surreal imagery comes into play. That's actually makes me wonder if this was intended as a horror game, which I still doubt. But I don't know. It doesn't seem as far fetched at this point as it did earlier. I mean, later on, I, I'm. I highly hey, Joseph, that makes me doubt it even more. But. And this is also one of those instances in uh, where um, you're in like a, a hostile area, except none of the characters actually try to hurt you. Well, not none, but and you're gonna see in a sec. And also, this is another one of those situations where they leave out random clues for you to see. Now, I don't know how you don't know what it, the inside of a monkey's ass would smell like, but this is your first clue, and you won't even know what he's talking about until a little bit, but... Yeah, these guys, they, it's weird, they seem to know about uh, a certain locked door. Um, which is kind of what these clues are about. 
and <laughs> um, you know, just randomly telling you. I hate everyone here too. I should mention that. See, you get a lot of people insulting you, but they don't really do anything about it. And killing, you can't really do that in the. Oh yeah, humans. You can kill humans. Um. And so this area, if I didn't mention it before, um, I mentioned some of the story reasons why this doesn't make sense, but I—that's not actually a hint for—I don't think it's a hint for something, but. This is a kind of, uh, I was reading the comments, uh, I remember a long time ago for this video, and it seems like a, or for this episode, I mean, and by the way, if you wanted to see the little, uh, outside of the bar again, there you go, um, a lot of people don't seem to realize how to complete it, and I can't, I didn't, I didn't actually need to walk through anything, but I don't blame people, like, you need to actually, um, you need to understand that, like, for instance, there's going to be some stuff that's written on a wall, and you have to know somehow that the color of it is important. I mean, you won't even know what people will be hinting at until, like, later. It's kind of, you know, very convoluted. So, I guess it's not a... I guess it's a problem a lot of adventure games have had, so it's not, like, horribly unique to this. Um, and I like this guy. He's laconic. He's straightforward. He's... If I'm using that word correctly. What oh, did I? Place? Oh, sorry. It's a bar demon. Um, I accidentally said the same thing twice. Blue hair here? I don't know anything about that. Are there any other places besides the bar here? Well, you can check the back alley. There's yeah, that's kind of important. Uh, um, maybe, um, maybe this goes into spoiler territory, but... Anyway, um... Well, we got ourselves a little Abraham Lincoln de demon, uh, just randomly, um, as well as, uh, I guess Nosferatu? Yeah, their dialogue's kind of boring like that. Um, now I'm gonna read off to you, um, I was mentioning how it's kind of convoluted, and this is Violet Ames' kind of response to the convolutedness of it, um, she said, uh, she gave, like, five hints, and, well, two, w you're about to see a hint right now, um, that hint, <laughs> um, she said, hint one, look for a map, which will help you at locate other areas, make sure you check in every room so you don't miss an important clue, which, the map isn't actually that helpful in this episode, but, um, hint two, some creatures may give you irrelevant information, so not all clues pertain to what you need, yeah, well, they, I never thought that any of the information that wasn't technically relevant was a clue, but... Hint 3. If you don't know the answer to a riddle, don't guess. Unlike in episode 5, which was entirely guessing. Look around for clues that will help you get the correct answer. Let me, let me, let me show those sentences in, like, the same, in the order. If you don't know the oh, make sure you check the color of that, you know, of that. That's important. <laughs> if you don't know the answer to a riddle, don't guess. Look around for clues that'll help you get the correct answer. So, if you don't know the answer to a riddle, her advice is, look around for clues that'll help you get the correct answer! Gee, I never would've guessed! <laughs> and this is not meant to be a guessing game, since the answer is available to you if you search for it. Unlike in episode 5, one episode ago... Yeah. Hint 4. Pay attention to the color of things. Color is a type of clue. Um, that would've been helpful. Back in the day. I don't know if this was there. I mean, I didn't read the descriptions ever, but... Hint 5. If you get stuck, then go back to places you've been to, since you might notice things you didn't notice before. Didn't help me in Episode 4! That, that... Didn't help me in Episode 4 at all. Update 2. Oh. Do you complaints about slowness? That is it. Okay, apparently this version has been updated so that Joseph moves faster. Apparently in the older version, he moves slower. And the pool game is made slightly easier, so if you're playing older versions of the game somehow, make sure, I guess, the pool game isn't going to be as easy as here. Ooh, and by the way, uh, we're going to go to another one of my favorite characters soon. Um. What are you doing here, you pathetic little ghost? This restaurant is only for you. 
Hi, I'd like to get a <laughs> God, yeah! <laughs> what? Like, uh, I'm sorry. I don't see how exactly- oh yeah, you can put him in an evil trance, um... And he apparently was sleeping soundly earlier, but in that image that showed him like dead, apparently, which dead is being in didn't make it is being interpreted. Well, yeah, I guess didn't make it technically works in this context. Um, so we're getting to another clue here. If you go to the um, bookshelf, so you know the stars, crosses, and flowers people I'm talking about. Here you go. Um, apparently we're looking for a white puff flower, according to the bathroom. A fancy cross that's orange. Or, oh no, I spoiled it. Wow, but it's it's a hint, you know. You're gonna I'm gonna show you where it is, so it's not like you needed any. So we get to the pool game. I cut out here. Actually, didn't quite um like uh quite. Me I hadn't memorized it again, so I just cut out my failed attempts. So you can see where I go. Um, yeah, I go from the like, middle one at the end, as you can see. Oops. Um, at least the majority of my failed attempts were cut. <laughs> um, this one I can happily say I got my first try. <laughs> yeah, like, I can laud that as a accomplishment of mine. With all the, um... What was I gonna say? With all the what? Um... So here's the thing I uh, so horribly spoiled for you. This uh... you're not as bad as I thought you were. Okay, here's the secret. The By the way, um, if you didn't know how I came to the conclusion of a white puff flower, um, I, I don't know if I explained it properly while I was in the bathroom. The white writing there meant that the correct color is white, and I didn't cut out here because you're just gonna. It doesn't take that many attempts to get a bullseye. And this guy just gives you a star. He's another one of my favorite characters, actually. <laughs> Why is it the characters that don't talk are my favorites? Uh, Joseph, the, ma the main ones are a little bit flat. You know, they're not the most strong characters. Here's the map Violet Aim was talking about. It It's not as helpful in this one as it is in others, so I don't know why she said always look for a map. Like, I've never had trouble finding out where anything is. Um, oh, yeah, and they have uh, apparently currency in the uh, underworld. Oh boy, this is kind of... This is just a scene where you, um, it's kind of weird. You just, like, move this stuff, as you can see, and, um... At the bottom, it'll say... And, and like, um, I'm not gonna spoil what it says, unlike last time. Well, you can see it now. Uh, I don't know if you could see there, but my cursor actually got stuck for, like, a tiny bit. And... Like, 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 by that I mean, like, I was dragging something and it would, uh, like, I couldn't put it down. But, um, as you can see, uh, you saw the word star written in yellow. That's a clue! Yeah, as Violet Aim said, um, well, there's the other side of the bar if you wanted to see that. Um, for some reason I like showing that stuff off. Um, but yeah, you need to unlock this door and you have to choose the... Uh, because this, it was written in yellow, you had to know that it's a yellow hairy star. Well, I mean, from the Harry Star was from the Bullseye game you won, and of course, it's this running theme of these people who, for no reason, are willing to just give you withhold clues from you unless you win some kind of competition. Like for no reason. Like it's not justified in the context of the story. Again, this is not the. I'm not saying this is the only game that's ever had that problem, but you know, just something. Tabitha. Hey, Joseph. Can you get me out of here? Sure. Wait a second, I think I hear someone coming. Uh oh, someone's coming. Oh, no. what do we do? They need a plan. So what can they do? Can they, like, give, um... What are they gonna do? Are they gonna, like... Who's there? I heard someone talking. Um, take her out of there, or, like, run away, or... What, what are they gonna do? It's... Oh, that was just me. I was talking to myself. What for? Come inside, and I'll show you. Most foolproof plan ever, people. Watch as they lock themselves in and then 
or wrist locking themselves in. Push him down. Come on. Hurry. They have enough time to converse quickly. Um, with a obvious saying the obvious, and he apparently has stayed out all this time, and or stayed down, or yeah, out by knocked out, and. <laughs> We get to watch this nice animation of him just strolling, you know, to catch the ghost. You know, so just strolling. A nice little stroll. Where are you, you little ghost? I know you're around here somewhere. That'll get him out there if they were in there. Yep, that, that's, that's a good enough investigation. You just leave, you know. You investigated that thoroughly enough. So what do we do? Maybe there's a way out from here. Look, up there. There's a grating, which leads to the vent. We can try to climb through that and find a way out. I don't know why, but the music here was kind of, uh... Not horrible, I'll say that. Well, the music in general isn't that horrible. It's kind of... I don't know, the, the audio quality is kind of, uh, like, screechy from now, or... At least in some of the earlier episodes it was. I don't know about now, but... I mean, this one, but... I'm not listening to the music at the moment, but... <laughs> And there's also, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, I, I noticed that there's some kind of like, yeah, you see that hog in like the water there, that he had those kind of Dude, demon, demonic eyes. I'm wondering if the, uh, just uh, non-sapient, you know, animals are also classified as demons. Um, like are, are all the, or all, yeah, all the, like animals in the spirit world are demons. Like is that, like, it, like every single one I've seen had like demonic, you know, like, they didn't have pupils in their eyes, so... Also, this escape from the underworld is a little bit anticlimactic. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's because they just get out instantly after they find... They just find Tabitha. Like, you just literally just push him down. Um, and the one guard didn't really resist much. And why Tabitha? Why'd they just go in there and take Tabitha? Why didn't he just grab the closest... Ghost ever. Do they just randomly abduct ghosts? I can believe that, but... Like, there were tons of other ghosts in there. Like, that, he, they were probably closer to the... Um... Like, a entrance than her that would risk... That, that, that would provide less risk in the circus of them getting caught, so... Please fall in the tunnel again. Ah, Dagnabbit. <laughs> well, these characters aren't exactly unsympathetic. They're just, you know... Um, by the way, this episode was co-hosted, not co-hosted, Istvan Orasi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, worked on this one. This is the first episode of Ghost Motel I ever saw, weirdly enough, and it's because I played a series of games, the Stickman Sam series, that was made by Istvan Orasi. I looked at the guy's work, and I noticed that this was on it, I, I, it piqued my curiosity, and that's kind of how I found out about the series, I remember. It was this, and it's episode eight, which is actually a genre shift for, like, like that, like that one episode will be a different genre than the rest, as well as the episode nine. But we'll get to those when we get to that bridge. I think I butchered the saying a little bit. So if I, my blabbering got in the way of you looking at the story, he finds out that you can. Uh, he doesn't want to go through the experience of going being a resident haunt or a guardian angel, you know, to those jobs to become a demon hunter. You'll be a certified demon hunter in no time. And Ray's telling him you can uh go through a crash course that gives you that. And he used to be a demon hunter, which explains his badass Ray. We'll admit, Raymond Sellers he is pretty uh badass. Um can you take me to the Demon Hunter Academy? Okay. You know, um, of course, he's kind of the one who kind of handles all the situations. Yeah, handles all the situations. I acted like that was incorrect, but it's not. Also, I thought this whole, th like, it's night here? Um, it'll become, like, day when it... I know, sorry, I, I just find the uh, timing of all this a little bit weird, because, from my recollection. Um, well, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. You see those shops across the street? Yeah. Well, the Demon Hunter Academy is somewhere there. What do you mean, somewhere? The Demon Hunter Academy is hidden. We wouldn't want some demons to find out where it is. 
Okay. That, that's... Oh, that, that's like saying a police academy... You, you need to hide a police academy because criminals could destroy it. Like, oh, oh no, you're, you're, it's being protected by other police officers, I assume. If, should anything like that happen? tried to figure out which place it's in. Okay. This is something you ought to do on your own. Me and Talitha will meet up with yeah, you Yeah, it, it just do it on your own, you know, for no reason. You know. I'm sure you'll be fine. I well, I got, uh, like, you know, um... Bye. Well, that that's coincidentally, you know, makes for a better, you know, I guess... Not puzzle design, but, you know, he's alone uh, in this game. And this is gonna come up with a crazy, uh, s stupid puzzle... Um, if you go in any of the shops, well, if you try, like, one of these first few shops, you'll, uh... Do you know where there's a school somewhere? You'll just get, you know, uh, nothing from them, but... You know, these ones, um... Sorry, I just like to show these off. Uh, and you can start off, you know, with some of the vague questions and here in the sandwich shop, and you'll still get, you know, no response. Um... Hi, do you know where the Demon Hunter Academy is? I might know. What's it to you? Then you get... Ah, oh, you get something. All these are correct, by the way. <laughs> All these options. I have no idea what the purpose of this was. They couldn't just, just made this uh, automatic thing, but... Him automatically saying it. But... Okay. I mean, it's not like I wouldn't want him to say that, so... And yeah, you can exchange a sandwich for a cup of coffee. Now, when she says that, she doesn't mean you can go into the coffee shop and just exchange it for a cup of coffee, which would be retarded enough. No! Watch this. Watch this. Um. Hi, can I trade this sandwich for something else? Like, you can just trade a sandwich. Oh, wait. Sorry. Never mind. You can trade a sandwich for... Yeah, this is even more ridiculous. Trading a sandwich for a goldfish. It's like... A a in the spirit world, also, but like it just—it's so surreal. Him trading a goldfish, like trading a sandwich for a goldfish. Like a store accepts that, and this guy with a kilt for some reason accepts. Like you'd give him a goldfish, and he has like, like how would he explain that to his manager? It's I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. I swear. But can I trade this donut for something else? This makes slightly more sense, but. Uh, cause I think of donuts and coffee in tandem, but... Okay, here's your cup of coffee. Hey! Alright, just follow me to the back. So, and, and what, what does this have to do with getting to the Demon Hunter Academy? She's just screwing with me. Like, she just wants me to do her a favor in order to do this. Like, imagine if, if for some reason some police, like, an actual police officer in real life, like, had this happen to them. To get into, like, a police academy, it's like, oh yeah, you gotta do an errand for me. Like, what? I mean... How many times have I said the words, I mean? And, by the way, you do have to go to school here, so... Oh, don't worry, I'll probably give you a little annotation. I've given you an annotation if you want to skip, but... The physical world and the spiritual world. Ghosts and demons can visit both worlds. Now, ghosts are humans that have lived a physical life and have died. On the other hand, spirits are creatures that have never lived a physical life and exist primarily in the spiritual world. Humans are physical beings with a spiritual body and a body of flesh. Ghosts are powered with love, while demons are powered with hate. Demons can hurt ghosts with hateful negative energies. On the other hand, ghosts can hurt demons with positive love energies. Ghosts and good spirits live on the surface of the spiritual world. On the other hand, demons live in the underworld, underneath the surface of the spiritual world. Hello, I'm your happy visual teacher. As demon hunters, you will be facing a lot of hateful demons who want to make you feel uncomfortable and miserable. Some may show you violent, scary, or disgusting images in your mind. If you are not prepared, you may fall into an evil trance and lose control of yourself. That's where the happy visuals come in. 
You must train yourself to remember a beautiful picture of happiness in your mind when confronted with unpleasant images. Now, here's a quick slideshow of a few happy images you might want to think about. Ooh, and feel free to come up with some of your own. Hello, I am your current event teacher. I will inform you about some important events taking place in the spiritual world. As some of you know, ghosts and demons have been at war in a constant struggle of good versus evil. As long as there is hate in the physical world, there will also be demons. Human hatred continues to grow and the demons are thriving. It would not be so bad if the demons were to remain in the underworld where they belong. However, they continually harass ghosts on a regular basis as well as torment humans. Demons also feed on humans from time to time. There are even known to be restaurants where demons serve up humans as food. These demons kidnap humans from the physical world, transport them here to the spiritual world and kill them there. Some of you know already, demon hunters fight demons with weapons. You can fight a demon with any kind of weapon you like. It can be a sword, a gun, a bow and arrow, a spear, a knife, boxing club, and so on. The weapons you fight with are spiritual weapons, not like the physical weapons you may have used before as humans. These spiritual weapons are powered by the positive energies of love from the thought forms. Raw thought form crystals are converted into solid or liquid substances. It can be in the form of bullets, sword polish, arrowheads, and so on. Remember, you can use whichever weapon you like. It's just a matter of preference or whatever you're comfortable with. Hello class, and welcome to Demon Hunting 101. I know all of you are here because we want to know how to be good demon hunters. Of course, you have to have courage, strength, and love. And there are many brave demon hunters out there, but the most powerful ones are the ones with the most love. Now, which is greater, the powerful weapon or the actual person fighting with it? It is the person who holds the weapon, and it is ultimately you who powers it, not the weapon itself. So remember, be positive, and fight with love. Hi everyone, I am your music teacher. One thing that helps demon hunters to stay positive is the sound of music. Some music can even hinder or hurt demons. Feel free to try out the demon hunter theme on these instruments. The piano, the trumpet, the harp, and guitar. By the way, that was Istvan Orasi with that, uh, do, doing that last voice, as well as uh, a few of the other ones. I forget which, but, well, I mean, you can just tell from the voice I didn't, I skipped over those last le lecture. Hopefully you did, too. If you wanted to go to school again, I'm just going to show you all the right answers. And may I, uh, if, while I'm ranting, you know, just look at these questions. And I skipped, like, my correct attempt. Well, no, I didn't yet, but, so, like, if you get one question wrong, it gives you a nice flashing wrong answer, you know, that, that raises my self-esteem. But, <laughs> uh, this is relevant. This is not, like, which is not on the, like, this just more or less shows you, did you go to class? It doesn't really ask you your, um, like, like it tests you on the actual knowledge of the curriculum very much. And remember, they kill humans in the spiritual world. That last question, I guess, does legitimately kind of testing your knowledge there, but other than that, it's like... So. Do I How many times do I say it's like in this video? <laughs> that was on topic, but... Alright, so we're starting off episode 8 here. Um, <coughs> hey, I'm here for the this is another one that Istvan Orasi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, worked on. As if he did some of the voices in the last one, I believe. And I mean, This is one where he actually helped program and make the game. And As I said, like this is... Um, well, you're gonna see. You can get certified. Okay. Get all the levels, see. Something hinting at a bit of a different kind of game here. The more practice you have, the better fighter you will be. 
Just walk through the door over there to begin your virtual reality training. Okay. You'll have four levels to complete, and if you're really good, you'll get to the secret level five. Good luck! So yeah, it's kind of starting off uh, looking a little bit different than the earlier ones did. It just goes to black until you know go like click on you know that thing. Yep, it's a platformer. Um, just so I know, uh, I I put the music in uh, at normal speed, but this gameplay is sped up. So, and you have to collect some crystals, blue crystals. You've seen me collect two oh, previously, and if you get, you have to get twenty of them. And there's twenty one throughout the entire game in order to get a fifth secret level. There's another one by the pig that you saw. I mean, it's all self-explanatory. You'll see me get them, and they're not that hard to find, really, so I don't think I have to show you. But as you might have guessed from me speeding this up, this game is a bit less than perfect. It's a platformer, and Isvan Arasi made this one. He makes some pretty good stuff. Um, this kind of went a bit by the top right of the screen. Um, it, this is a bit... Um, the controls are a bit slippery. Uh, you, you you hit with the... Um, you use control to like slash the sword. You have to hold it down. Uh, someone was actually mad they didn't explain that. And as you can see from me, um, <laughs> speeding up this boss fight even more, this can get pretty repetitive. They, all the boss fights, uh, they, they just go on the same uh, pattern that they don't deviate from. And the sword, you have to hold it down. They don't explain that you have to hold it down in order to use it, which apparently confused some people uh, in the comment section of the game. Uh, with, um, you can also press, uh, shift to hold, uh, of your, um, shield up, and that'll, uh, you can't move, but it'll shield you from certain, uh, pretty much everything, and as you can see, you have to collect those, um, pink, uh, thought forms for help, but, uh, the black ones, uh, hurt you, and someone actually complained, I remember a while back, that they didn't move, I mean, <laughs> God, this game did get some mixed opinions. Some people thought it was uh, pretty good. Others thought it was horrible. And I'm just like, eh, you know, it's got some... It's good. It's decent. And it's kind of, you know... They're trying something new, but they didn't really... You know, uh, deliver on the... And it's been Arasi made this, um... Like, or at least he helped on it. So I'm a little bit surprised, uh, I guess, that it's a bit... As mediocre as this. Usually he makes some... At least uh, the Stickman Sam series is something I remember him making... I think I played something else of his, but... Um, and, and by the way, those boss fights, do, as I said before, they take a long time. Like, they, um, the boss fights just, uh, they stay on this one pattern that they don't deviate from, uh, in their attacks, but they actually have a crazy amount of health. Like, I was speeding that up. That was not the amount of time you can expect to take to, uh, to beat them. It's pretty... The boss fights are my least favorite part of this game, easily. That and the fact that if you lose all your lives, you lose all your crystal, the blue crystal, uh, the blue thought forms, which don't, I have no idea how they exist, and I think I missed a life there. Oh wait, no, I'm getting <laughs> But yeah. Um, they don't, they don't seem to exist in the story of the game, but they, but, um, which is kind of, like, that's kind of weird. If you die, you lose all of them, and thus you have to replay everything if you want to get to the secret, fifth secret level, which isn't that good. Um, it's about as good as the other ones, they... And notice, I don't see how this trains him for, like, demon hunting very well. I mean, the bosses all have, uh... They do the exact same thing, uh... Like, like they have this set pattern of things they do. They don't deviate from it. And... By the way, there's a thought form you actually have to lose a life for. How is that helps with him with demon hunting? I do not un not comprehend. But um, like you, you see, like on the t bottom left there. Um, actually, I don't think I go ahead. And, I don't think I got that one. Yeah, I, I didn't get that one. Well, here's the thing. Like I said, there's 21 throughout, so I just I think I skipped that one. Um, but yeah, you can see one on the bottom right that I just got. Again, they're not really hard to find. You, you, they're there's one. There's going to be one at the boss fight as well. Um, but you don't. Have to use, either way, you do have to lose some health in order to get it. And there's no indication that there's more than 20. Like I would. I assume there's just five per level, but this one is six. Also, as you can. <clears throat> um, I, I'm so glad that uh, you, they don't. That 
attacks don't knock you back, considering that level is very... That, that's one thing I'd give it, like, that, that would have made that level a lot worse if that were the case. This one's probably the most repetitive in the sense that you can only hit this one in a very, um, there's a very, uh, short period of time you can actually land one or two hits on this guy. And... Also, why does he have a blue shirt? He doesn't get that till later, uh, in the action in the other games. And this is, this was made before the others. Like, the last ones are made in 2005, but this is 2004, so I'm kind of confused. And... Also, Red Dragon, what a creative boss name. <laughs> what else do I have to say about this game? I think I've said my whole piece. I hope I'm not coming off as too... I know I'm giving uh, the developers of this game a lot of guff, so to speak. I can't think of a better word for it. Um, they're pretty... Uh, because, you know, I'm obviously... I don't think I could... Uh, you know, it takes a lot of effort to make a game, I know, and, like, just riffing on a game is a lot easier than making one, but, you know, you know I, I doubt I could do better, I understand. As, as I think this is in general with a lot of my criticisms, I understand that I probably am not doing any better than the than the people who I'm criticizing, but, you know, you don't have to be a carpenter, a good carpenter to know when a table is broken. Um, and as I said, criticism is done for its own sake, so... It's not like I think I, my, my stuff is good, but... And I do have to say, it's not all bad. As I said, the story's kind of interesting if the characters are a bit flat. Um, the ad but the point-and-click aspects, it's not really good as a point-and-click point adventure game. It's kind of... Not a lot of depth, for one thing, and you don't really... Have By the way, this level, I need to mention, there's some... Yeah, did you see up there? I don't know if you could tell, but I actually fell through a platform. I really don't see how that's intentional. I mean, there's no indication there's any... I, I don't know. Maybe there's like a small chance they, they could have intended some platforms that you're supposed to fall through, but I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me why they would... And it's also pretty short, as you can see. Like, it was shorter than the other ones, I think. At least for my remembering. And this boss isn't the hardest one. It is the... Takes the longest, though. Um... <clears throat> And Big Fish, another creative name. And that's actually a cool glitch that you saw there, where slashing at uh, a boss, you know, sometimes uh, that pink... Um, like, like that pink, like, a blur you see when you slash is, uh, sometimes stays, even after I've hit him. That's a cool glitch, kind of, in the sense that I like, I like the way it looks. Also, I hope that me speeding up the boss fights isn't really, like, effect negatively affecting uh, the, the ability of someone to see how I'm doing, but, you know, I, I, I really don't see how it would be, considering that, again, these boss fights, they're literally, you know, don't change their pattern whatsoever. And here's an in a weird kind of animation for after you've beaten him. He's not dead for some reason, and, like, like all of a sudden you're fishing, and, and then this happens... And off screen, yeah, we just defeat him. In a virtual world, we, like, from the virtual world, we suddenly see him, his dead, like, body uh, put on a wall. And, so that, get, and this is a, a weird one. This is kind of an animation thing. Well, <laughs> it is an animation thing. Um, actually, I haven't seen this a lot. This is... I don't... Joseph looks like nothing like he does. Well, not nothing like he, do, like he does in, like, the actual hand-drawn game, but... Not hand-drawn. Uh, like, the 2D animated one, but... This demon looks nothing like any... Well, sort of like the demons we've seen before. Uh, it's... This was made in, like, 2004 still, I think, so... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that was episode nine. Uh, completely unrelated. The comment people did not like that one nearly as much, um, including me. <laughs> uh, that was. So we finally get to see Ray and Tabitha in a second. Um. Hey guys, I just finished my training at the Demon Hunter Academy and got certified. Now I'm ready to go fight demons. Good job, Joseph. 
I don't see how that really taught us to do much, but okay. <coughs> Sorry. I passed all four levels in my virtual reality training, and I even got to level five. Can you take me to a weapon store? Like, yeah, well, with the bosses that hall out there, weird. Um, it didn't actually do anything aside from their one set pattern. I don't know. I think that I sound like a broken record talking about that. And now that the actual platforming part is over, and we're back to the point and click aspect. We're at episode ten right now. Um, this is a point and click game. It doesn't make sense from a story standpoint. But it's actually quite a bit better than the other ones, uh, in terms of as a game. As I put your present in that locker with a combination lock. Uh, from a story point, it's not really as dark, but and I the things won't make as such sense. Like, look, yeah, um, <laughs> she had, yeah, she she, she had like a piece of paper with clues that are she just like threw on the town. Like that's obviously you know contrivance. I mean, you've probably seen stuff of this nature quite a bit before. Um, right here in the locker room, though, you can find one of the clues, and they aren't really so much clues as they are, and this is what happens when you guess wrong, um, they aren't so much clues as they are, um, <coughs> you know, tell you, like, well, I, I don't know if you count that as a clue, um, because it's, it's, I think it's a bit too specific, but, um, because three of the pieces of paper are the actual, they give you three of the numbers you need as the combination, but... Also, I don't think... I mean, my locker doesn't work. Well, sort of... Nah, I was going to say my locker doesn't work like that, but I realized that they aren't inputting numbers, they're turning it, so... Uh, my logic does not work. Well, my logic works fine. It's, well, I think you guys would say differently, but... It's just that I'm failing to use it. Ah, 17, that's one of the... Alright, one of the answers. Um... Now, that was kind of the most straightforward. I have no idea how it would be with a pizza. And uh, if you look at the bottom left there, yeah, one of them had absolutely nothing on it. Looks like you forgot something there, Tabitha, but... Now, this one's kind of weird. This is not required. Well, I mean, if you want to see the piece of paper at the bottom right, it is, yeah, but... I want to get a weapon. What kind? <laughs> we have all sorts of weapons. Um... Now, you can click on any weapons, and, uh, oh, yeah, you, like, literally, if you click on every other weapon, it says that. Oh, now, thankfully, what you're about to do is not required, but, oh, I don't really like um, it. when you pick the sword that you saw in Joseph's, um, virtual reality thing, but, if you didn't play that game, you wouldn't actually know it, since it's a different genre, and there's no real reason you need to play it. Now, I actually got lucky, and I picked the right one, but, okay. of those identical swords, if you pick the wrong one, he just says, oh, I don't really like this, and you, and you just have to guess. I actually accidentally got the right one. I didn't. I, I didn't remember. I just hey, didn't Joseph, get the right one. Oh yeah, apparently you're supposed to go here before the yeah, actual like locker thing. But. Okay. Um. Twenty-eight. It's important. <laughs> just a random piece of paper tw saying twenty-eight. You know that could be somebody else throwing around something there. We don't know that any crumpled up piece of paper is a clue. Excuse me. Yeah, I just took this piece of paper, you know, and I'm only, I, I, I kind of like, I like to bribe people to telling them what it is by confirming, by being, because I'm kind of an, a fanboy, you see, of peppermint ice cream, so I actually like to have them, I actually just blackmail them until they get a peppermint ice cream out of them, um, which that wasn't peppermint, but I guess I'd show you what happens when it's not. Right. Yeah, he walks in there, um, doesn't even talk to him, and then he just shouts and says, You chose my favorite ice cream! Have a piece of paper! <laughs> I love this guy's logic. Um, and now we're gonna go to these clever movie titles. Um, okay, in all seriousness, these are actually kind of cute. Um, although they don't actually make sense in the movie's con... Oh, yeah, this is the... One of the, them that has a combination on it. Like, ghosts are like, they're not the equivalent, they aren't the spiritual world's equivalent of zombies or something. So, Return of the Living. That, that, again, that, that that one makes sense, but. Um, that one too. Um, okay, that makes sense in the context. Yeah, okay, okay, these all sort of make sense, but. Like, that last one kind of didn't. Uh,
Yeah, not much to say there. It's just a pretty kind of just showing off the store. Um, what are we gonna? Um, Lee's clothing. Uh, this is a bit weird. Um, well, first of all, we have this conversation. That's kind of. I want to get some clothes too. You mean how I should wear clothes, right? It doesn't matter, really. Um. Well, you guys wear clothes. Maybe I should too. Sure, go ahead. Hey, how come neither of you told me I was naked? You know, there are other ghosts who weren't wearing anything, and they didn't. Because nobody else raised in batted an eyelash, but I saw that joke from Jake and Amir. Ah, uh, I'm not. Other ghosts like are wearing clothes. But lots of ghosts wear clothes. Clothing is more for decoration here. So, I mean, I think he could have assumed that already, but, eh. I want to get some clothes now. Now, here's the weird thing. Yeah, you, you can pick for any of these. Now, if you played, again, if you played the game, you know, you'll pick the right one immediately, and then you'll get access to that clue. Um. But if you don't, if you just click another one, you won't get the clue. So that, that piece of paper just magically disappears as you try these on. And by the way, you can't leave with the weapon or, like, leave with the shirt. Like, you just... All right. Yeah, it just says, like, outright that that's, like, you, you just get a slightly different cutscene, so. That's kind of annoying. Again, if you didn't play the game now, Episode 8, because there's no real reason to, since it's a different... Well, let me put it this way. There is reason not to play it, since it doesn't really advance the story, and it's not the same genre, so. And every time you actually mistype it, it'll act like, oh, you're guessing. You're like the scum of the earth. And Violet Ames eyes, and possibly Wayne Colt X or X Wayne Colt X, who I don't think actually, Let's go. who may or may not deserve his position of like co-founder, but I mean, I mean co, you know, collaborative mm -hmm. cr collaborative credit for the project. Uh, excuse me. I think I'm getting tired. What do you mean you're tired? You're a goat. Goats don't get tired. Then I'm mentally tired. I just want to relax for a little while. Okay, just tell me how to get to your motel. So this is kind of like the first time I think Raymond has ever actually been to the ghost motel. I keep calling it the ghost motel, not just the motel, but... For some reason I get mad at myself for doing, but... I don't know if now's a good time, but I might actually want to bring up this review I've seen in episode, um... There's a review actually present in the, the very first episode. Where? Oh, it's right now. They're, uh. Is everyone okay? Um. They, yeah. Their cards. Well, if you I'm couldn't. Right. If for some reason you don't have eyes yeah, and you couldn't see, the cards got wrecked. Um. I was going to bring up this review, which I'll sh show you in. Looks screen like cap of in a post. Fire, which needs to be fixed. Look, there's a house over there. Maybe we can stop there and fix your car. Well, two. Two reviews are. Now, um, the first review, it's kind of, it was done in 2012, so, it said, for the first time it was cute and the graphics decent, but sadly it just hasn't aged very well, and as another pro poster mentioned, the ending is so abrupt and overdone that it makes the rest of the story and game to that, to that point seem like a pointless joke. No, it was an unfinished project, so maybe the end was shortened it to wrap it up. It's kind of a shame it was cute in front of the point. Now, that was a review specifically of episode one, so... Uh, but it, I do have kind of that opinion on the entire series, except... Including the abrupt end, funnily enough. Even though I was just talking about episode one, I say the entire series, but... Since they didn't make it go so much until 12 yet. And, of course, I think you saw me just finding the, uh, tape, um... Yeah, the, I actually did like this game a lot when I was young, and, I, and to, to their credit, um... I think this game is pretty unique in this. This whole series is kind of unique in this, in the sense that you know, like I guess in a sto from a story standpoint, I like it. I like it is unique. I can't say the characters are done all that well, and I don't have a very. I don't take in a whole lot of variety of stuff, media in general. So maybe this concept has been explored better somewhere else, but. I guess of I guess of turning I guess the spiritual world into a more just a, in, in something where you know people work at jobs and are doing you know more stuff reminiscent of our society I guess you could say. Okay, it's all set. Let's go get Tabitha. 
And I imagine that concept probably has been explored in other places, though. Well, probably that. better, so. Yeah, the characters could have used a bit of fleshing out, is... Tabitha, the car's and the puzzles a bit could have been done trying. a bit better. Wake up, Tabitha, wake up. What happened? Something strange happened. I was staring in this mirror, and then suddenly, my reflection came out of it. It looked just like me, except more evil. Like an evil twin. Oh, and I maybe I should give you the other review as well. I don't know if I'm interrupting the story too much, but... I'll, I'll, I'll save this for the forced scene, I guess. I'll just... Maybe I shouldn't talk over too much. Well, then again, not much dialogue now. You're just gonna see... And by the way, good job, Tabitha, looking into a mirror that outright says you... that <coughs> you will reflect and you will come out of it. Oh, and by the way... I'd have just have the backwards if you didn't notice, which I think most you probably did. I guess we'll have to watch the ghost motel now. And here's just a maze kind of thing. Um, you have to. Well, I guess I kind of spoiled it since it technically hasn't been yet, but. Let's try to find our well, I show you uh, where to find the map and where not to go and where to go. I guess I'll read you this other review. Try not to get lost. Good. One of the, um, here's a view that actually breaks it. It's a good and bad. Good. Very well worked on. Layout of the mansion looks very nicely done. Looks very interesting. And immediate. And immediately, I was happy that it was interactive because I could sort of have a say in how it was explored. The music was very spooky and suitable. Very nice job. Makes the series show its true colors instantly. I don't remember watching the Ghost Motel before, but I, it sure does have a rather spooky and mind capturing feel to it. Oh, we already found the map. <laughs> Where was I? Um. The vo um, I wouldn't say the voice acting was good, but that really shows the characters' real traits. For, yeah, I'm not gonna say the characters are a strong point or the voice acting, for that matter. For the time, I can only imagine how freaky this must have been, because even now the pilot episode has quite the spooky aura to it. Yeah, now people are. That is kind of weird. People are talking about it like it was supposed to be a horror thing, which I doubt it. I think it's just supposed to be. Um, I wouldn't call it horror exactly, but. Um, can't wait to check out the other episodes. I'm sure they're all just good because I, I really like you're going places with this. Um, improve. The ending was either abrupt and made the whole thing seem sort of like a joke. Um, for those of you who haven't, uh, who just watched my thing where I edited, edit, edited the last part out, uh, like I edited the transitions from episode to episode, um, I guess it wouldn't seem abrupt to you, but if you actually play the episode... It's just him going into the room and then, and then seeing like this uh, scary picture of a, like like a bit more of a freaky version of the demon, but like had a scream in it. And by the way, this is just mash buttons. The game. Wow, Wait, good, mashing buttons only Thanks. happens in games. That joke makes no sense, stupid genius seven. fifty-five. Uh, unless you're viewing this on some channel that's uh, uploaded it. Since I put my, a lot of my videos in the past in Creative Commons rights Look, attributed, or however you car. pronounce it, so, I mean, say it, so... Let's try to find her. Um, and, and by the way, if you are, make sure you go to, um, the Stupid Genius 55 if you want to see this without ads, because at least with my Let's Plays, I don't put ads on them. The others in the future might, but... I don't have any plans for my Let's Plays this far, so if you're seeing ads, so just rooms. saying you can get them ad-free in my normal channel, but... Right. Can't just check I should, but yeah, we're back at the Ghost Motel. Finally, the series name Maybe stops being an artifact. Just of the stuff. I should let... I should probably tell you about the last few parts of this review. The ending was rather abrupt to me. The whole thing seemed like sort of a joke. It didn't really capture my attention or make me wonder what will happen in the continued parts. The music, after a few minutes, got very annoying in a constant loop. I think a full version of more tracks should be made, and the length of the series should be made should be much longer to please a real fan. Yeah, the stuff can be kind of... That's just... If, if you just guess, of course, as usual, as Violet Aim will probably taunt you in your face. Probably, um... Not necessarily taunt you, but will probably tell you, like, thousands of times, do not guess! Guessing is the, the devil. Sinful. Hey, we get you, uh... I'm gonna call you Herman. I don't matter. You look like a Herman. It matters. 
If you want, you can talk to some of the ghosts in the lobby. Because maybe you're one of those good spirits. I don't Leave know. Leave me alone. Because we thus far again, you haven't we haven't seen any of them. Sorry, I don't know anything about that. Okay, here's where we get to yeah, the sort of. Actually, I saw this demon in a second, you're gonna see. Really uh, one of the. Do you live in this more hotel? um adventure then, game kind of fails the game question, has. Uh, from a story standpoint, in the sense that. He's, he just arbitrarily... It's the same sort of deal with the uh, Riddler. He just asks you questions arbitrarily and withholds information from you. Um, like the uh, pizza guy. He withholds information from you uh, like unless you answer questions, which I have no idea what he gets out of this. But, um... There's, uh, and the, the, navigating these rooms is also a little bit confusing. Um, because, like... You have to enter, like, you can enter those rooms, and um, these arrows get, don't really give you much of a sense as to whether you're going to the left, to the right, if you're going, like, back. Um, even though they kind of point in the direction, sometimes you end up in a room where you think you wouldn't. It's hard to describe, it's just... Um, when, you, when you're going, I think it's most eminent, prominent when you go in those hallways, and by the way, there's an R engraved in the... Grandfather clock. Um, <clears throat> if you if you if, if you didn't guess, that I need, that's important for the questions. It's with these paintings, and this painting also is for a really stupid puzzle. Um, in the questions, uh, when you're going into those rooms, and you you won't come out where you think you'll come out is a weird thing. I'm sorry, I'm not describing this very well, but. Like, see, like, if you saw there briefly, like, like, pressing down doesn't take you back to the, uh, ghost motel, um, room. Like, it won't take you back to the lobby, it'll just take you back to where you were before. Sometimes down doesn't always mean the down. How do I put this way? The down, when you go to the left, down in that screen doesn't mean the same as the down that was in the previous screen. I shouldn't be explaining this so thoroughly, because there's no way to can I can do that. Um, you're gonna want to check all these... <coughs> Well, no, you don't want to check all these if I show you which ones you want to check, but... I'll be showing you the... Um, uh... Well, I, I guess I'll wait till you see it. And just one of these, you'll see there, there's that necklace. Yeah, um... And there's one more thing in here, but I actually uh, skipped it by accident, so sorry about that. But I'll just show then, you the answers. It's also in those drawers, or cupboards, excuse me. And I have no idea how he knows like that there's that many all the time. Does the, the Golden Hotel have some quota? Like, why? And he also knows, apparently they serve the same me all the time. There's a necklace is common knowledge. People memorize what paintings aren't in the room, and they memorize also what key was okay. present in a the certain room is number 36 and he also looked at the exact room they went into when he was just sitting there so um if you go back into the cupboards I actually can I'm, I'm for I actually forgot about where the uh, key was held and I decided to look back here and I found it immediately by luck uh, beginner's luck I guess except I had done this quite a few times before but I was just memory yay so we're nearing the end of the last episode here, and this isn't very reminiscent of, like, the original, huh. Well, I mean, it is, it is reminiscent of it. I meant to say that there's, uh, why, why am I even speaking? <laughs> I can't, I'm wrong. I'm going to the balcony in case he tries to escape. Okay, see the drum, we'll be here waiting. I can't wait any longer. For some reason, he's only I'm wearing a speedo worried. while the others are fully. Calm no, down. he's fully clothed while the other two are just wearing um. The human smells so delicious. Singlets, not singlets. I um. Now. Sweet blood and juicy whatever you call the things. Shut up, like basically, he's fully clothed, They're either or not, which is kind of odd, as well as Adabat. And uh, get ready to fight again. Um. What happens is, 
typing Tutor Turbo, just type in happiness is bliss while the other... Oh, yeah, um... I accidentally must have... Well, I think... I don't know if I did that on purpose or not, but for whatever reason, they failed. And Tabitha's just standing there holding that crystal. You can't focus on it, but those demons... Look at the animation on those demons, or... I hope you looked at them, because they don't last very long. And you don't get to see them very long, but... And how is this the exact opposite of Tabitha? Wouldn't that make her, like, um, male? No. Okay, that no is kind of... The, the, the expression... I love how Tabitha has no expression. And why are you at the bottom? You weren't even supposed to be on the balcony. And those... And Raymond and Joseph just had the most... Did we kill them? The expressions were just so... How do I describe it? Weird. That's how I describe it. Hi, we just hunted some demons. I need to get rid of their bodies. My friend doesn't have enough room in his car. Okay, thanks. Um, what do I have to say about this now? Um, pretty much all I've said. I think I said everything I want to about the series in general. What will I do if there's ever a Ghost Motel 12? Um, if there ever is one, I'll, I'll just I'll just re-upload this video with uh, Ghost Motel 12 put at the end. Or knowing me, I'll redo the entire thing again as I've done like five times, or four times technically. Or this is the fourth time. I was exaggerating Hell. anyway. What am I What's doing? What's that? It's the pit of hell. It's where we dump all the comatose... Yep, see, they actually bodies. alluded to this in the job description the for Demon Hunters. Now, just toss them down there to be out of our way. I smell something strange down there. You know, you're standing awfully close. Scared. Hope you don't fall in. Let's go. Guess what's gonna oh, happen. Ah, uh, see, he didn't fall in. He got dragged in. Apparently, a demon can just go up there and drag him in. Um... So... Yeah, Joseph... Eklang Colt X clearly did the voice for Joseph. Um, pretty much... And Onyx did the voice for, like, the demons, so... I mean, Onyx, uh... Yeah, sorry, that's another... That's, that's a different guy, um... Yeah, I know, uh, she... Saying that you have to go to the previous episodes to understand the story, and some people misleading that as... And also, there used to be a website called ghostmotel.com, even though it's linking to a GeoCity site. I do remember... I don't think it's around anymore, but there used to be a site dedicated to Ghost Motel entirely. <clears throat> they actually had these uh, games that had, like, Joseph, um... Like, they had the characters of them, but they were, like, like remakes of, say, Pac-Man. Like, Ghost Motel Pac-Man. Just replaced them with Ghost Motel characters. It was weird. Um, and they called... The episode 12 was called, like, The Pit of Hell, so... They actually had a name for it, and they just said that they were insanely busy, they didn't have time for it. When I saw it, I saw a ton of comments, people telling uh, me that uh, it had been like a couple of years at that point since they'd seen, since it had been announced. And as I said, in 2010, Violet Aim did say to check out the, she just um had an episode that, uh, oh, by the way, I love how this, so I'm during the circus show, Tabitha disappears, like, th they try to downplay the fact that <laughs> uh, someone just kidnapped her, um, like, like, the fact that Joseph just didn't notice, like, Oh, these things happen. Well, I mean, no, you think you notice, but <clears throat> only to find many traps. Only if you, you know, only to find many traps. Um, what traps? Unless you die, you're not gonna find any dra traps. Um, of course, you're probably gonna die, but I, I'm assuming canonically he didn't die or, or get put into an evil trance in episode five before Ray could save him. Now, getting back to the matter at hand, um, like, in 2010, as I said, she made a post saying, hey, go check out our previous Ghost Motel episodes, shilling them out, and said, X-Wing Colt X, I haven't spoken with him in years, and he shouldn't have been given co... shouldn't have been given credit as being a co-commentator on our series, but... Yeah, it's no use in activity. That's, this, this description in a nutshell, I love that, um... What did I just say this description in a nutshell? I meant to say... You know what? Screw it. I'm not going to say I meant to say anymore. I'm just going to go with my first take. 
done if you could hear me snap. Um, maybe you could, just in a different way. Um, thank you. Yeah, it says X-Wing called X and Onik. Like, did X-Wing called X, like, not... Any, and, and this is just, like, actually, um... This is kind of weird. Um, I actually didn't check out this... Like animation that they have uh, that they're gonna show. Um, they have some other stuff here. I went I went out of the room when I recorded it, so this will be my first time seeing it. And th this is made like after episode four, before episode five, so this doesn't have anything after that. This is like a direct. This is weird. I'll show you what it is. It's um they have some you know outtakes that they made. You know obviously. Just also, I have no idea why this guy has legs, um, if he's a ghost, which leads me to believe that him and Herman are, um, secretly, uh, the good spirits who are trying to pass by, like, and not... <laughs> I love this, like, weird John Hayes. That At least they admit that they're kind of weird, but... Well, they don't, but... Now, I, I think Herman and the Riddler ghost, that's what they call him in this one, are good spirits who just don't want to be bothered fighting demons, so they try to slack off and become local workers, but they don't want to... And they try not to downplay the fact that they're good spirits, or maybe they, they outright hide it. Hi, this is Joseph from the Ghost Motel series. Hi, this is Tabitha from the Ghost Motel series. And we're here to bring you the behind-the-scenes commentary. Yeah, that's what it is. It's kind of a... We also have here with us Ray and the Riddler Clown. Before watching these extras, you should probably watch the Ghost Motel 4 Well, I think first. we have. It's not a movie, yeah, as much as a game. Well, it's a point and click game, but. About the movie, as well as the history of the earlier episodes. Okay, I'll start. Ghost Motel was created back in January 2001. But due to the director's lack of faith in it, it was not completed and released until. November <coughs> the director? Wait, the they called her the director. To be quite controversial. How? Many what? Oh, they're, they're just joking. Oops. Here is a clip from the first episode. Welcome to the Ghost Motel. Notice how staticky or scratchy the voices are? Okay, well, I mean, hey, that, that, you, you, like, the actual yeah, voice yeah, acting, um, like, even without that, I was, I won't exactly say the voice acting in general is good, but it does get better later on still. Even, like, the actual voice acting, too. I'm not talking about the, uh, quality of the voices, but. I think someone said it should be called Hotel. Uh, I don't think so. This isn't the Ritz-Carlton. There are no maids. You're a bit more snarky here than you normally are, Joseph. In the, motel. the place is a dump. Yeah, like... Even though it's called Ghost Motel, it doesn't mean that the whole... I remember how he said that, actually, from a while back, that this place is a dump. I didn't watch yeah, it the time, and I'm not listening to the voices, but... The wants to really push the story into other areas. Which, thank God, because I'd be complaining about the voice acting if I did, but... It's not that horrible, just a bit... Oh, unemotional, yeah. I'll say. my character meets yours. Yeah, and you were all freaked out by that demon you saw. Well, if you saw what I saw... Hey, you're showing things out of yeah, order, guys. Yeah, yeah, I know. The demon was eating a corpse. It was disgusting. He almost killed me. Anyways, here's a clip from the third... Oh, yeah, this is made before episode 5, where you couldn't be killed in the ghost, in, in the ghost world, which was, uh... <coughs> commenter, but I remember, actually brought that up in episode 4, like, years and years back. I said it'd be explained later on. Now for episode 4. That took forever to come out. I think the director wow, about it. Wow, in hindsight, I'm never going to be a demon hunter. At so, this yeah, you, you never I are, Joseph. I mean, was he, he was, but not. Were they kidnapped by aliens or something? I don't know. It's that's actually pretty alien. plausible it's after 2010, and that, that, that that's not, no, 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 12 hasn't materialized. Huh? Oh, there's the umbrella. A lot of viewers seem to have a problem with noticing that clue. But that's kind of funny, because I remember the River Clown giving clues about leaving his... Yeah, but you had to go back to the start, you had to restart the episode for that, you guys. Ugh. And you're calling the viewers morons for that. It's like, oh, and you're leaving now, it's great. Hey, Riddler, why don't you go get us some drinks? What the hell? Uh, um, um, no problem, I'll get them. That's kind of... How is that? Like, he's just standing there. Like, I don't think he's a good spirit anymore. Or he is, and I'm d and good, or, or, and they're, and the good spirits aren't really that exactly nice.
maybe they're like you know what it's an upright like it's the establishment that's like maybe they have unjust laws oh boy commenting with an overall rating of 10 excellently to continue the story i think it's extremely cool how you make us watch out for more interactive than the other three i hope you continue this cartoon game i'm really looking forward to ghost watch out 5 when it comes to the portal keep up the excellent work oh that person actually took the time to watch and review all the episodes so yeah, you give us a good review, so of course they're, you know, gonna, the <laughs> they're gonna, you know, say, yeah, he took the time, he, I bet that review took a lot of effort. Why are you taking so long to read that? Uh, well, that's not exactly that surprising, I mean. Overall rating of nine. Very good. It's Idea Man. You kept thinking about the continuation of this animation. That's that you I can make. I write me what I like much. Congratulations. What did he say? I think that's a good thing. Oh, here's another Okay, this is a, that's a little bit. That's, that's good. This one is from Big Wrench 1957 with an overall rating of one. This sucks ass. This is only for losers that don't have a life. This sucks big time. Who the hell has the time to go back to previous episodes for clues in order to get through this one? If this was done by a major gaming company, it would sit on the shelf in stores and rent places till it decomposed. It sucks. It sucks bad. Save new grounds and space and us from having to deal with crap like this. Don't do another. Who said anything about having to watch well, uh, you know what, I'd have to agree with them on that, that, uh, yeah, I have to agree that people shouldn't have complained about that. And yet, he can't seem to figure out that, I guess, it's us, I mean, in the sense that, like, they weren't, that, that wasn't, those weren't valid complaints. But I've never seen them, mind you, so. Oh, God, no, no, Riddler, like, what, what does that mean? That's, you're worse than me, in terms of thinking of jokes to make. I'm like the bare minimum of joke making, and you're worse than me. <coughs> oh look, that's Horace on the far left. Horace looks like a happy, silly guy, but he seems to run into some bad luck. I think he's a little psycho and delusional. Just to the right of him is Lepo. He's a dark little character. To tell you the truth, he kind of freaks me out. Let's move on. There's the Riddler's portrait on the wall. He really likes his eggs and omelets. And that brings up another thing. Not everyone knew that he liked omelets so much. He even wanted to pose with an omelet for his portrait. An omelet with a clown? Who knew? Oh, there's Tricky the doll. From what I understand, the directors had trouble with whether they should put it in or not. But Good. it worked out well. From what I hear, the evil looking clown with the riddles didn't like him too much. Who are you calling evil? Me? Oh, wait, what? Uh, sorry, I didn't make any sense there. Oh, look at the circus. Isn't it neat? The directors had actually found a No, you actually had to... Z you couldn't go back to zoom out to the whole thing and select another one. You have to... Unlike the extras they hired, who pretty much sat there and did nothing. Basically, no movement from them. They were just still. Well, the one sitting beside you did look hilarious. It's more than you guys did, ever. Don't forget to check out the other extras, like the funny outtakes and deleted scenes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode of Ghost Motel. Um, so that was basically, uh, wow, well, as if you couldn't tell, it was basically it. Um, I've seen all these. This one's a bit... Why you so long to get here? Sorry, I had to go take a leak. ba bum bash or, Unless they did that in the... Abatha, will you have sex with me? What kind of ghost do you think I have? It is a little bit, I will admit, it's kind of funny in the sense that it's of, of a surreal way of seeing these static characters actually talk, like, slightly started. dirty. In the same way it'd be funny watching, you know, ch like... Sure. It'd, that'd be funny if people on, like, I don't know, Sesame Street or something doing started. that, which it probably is somewhere, I mean... I think I do remember something like that, but... Sorry, 
some parody like that, but I mean, and I mean, the idea just in general is pretty, like those Barney videos telling people to commit suicide or those happy tree friends, you know, those are all, <coughs> um, um, okay, and maybe that was an actual deleted scene for all I know. Yeah, um, too bad you don't get to s that, That's not me, like, that, that wasn't a joke where, I, like, it didn't actually happen and I put the censorship bar in front of it. That actually is actual, like, he actually did show his dick there, which is funny. Um, with the, with the fade out, maybe it was intended to be in there originally, so I doubt this was, but... Like, I assume this is one of those fake ones that they make, but... And, uh... This isn't actually the end of it, though. Well, if you're looking at the YouTube bar... You know, in the sense that... If you're looking at the actual... Real, yeah, this isn't the only, you'll notice that I actually decided to include a parody called Ghost Hotel. This is an affectionate parody, they do like this, um, and it is a bit, <laughs> I like that, they actually poke fun at the, uh, useless, um, direction. Uh, and Joseph here looks downright hilarious. Yeah, this, uh, this is actually a pretty good deconstruction of stuff, I don't know if I should be commentating over this. This is actually episode two. Rawr, um, I am the demon Moonslot, and I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and this is like episode one. <laughs> uh, sorry, like this is episode one of Ghost Hotel is supposed to be. Trying. Waiter? You talk to waiter? What? This is not a waiter. Herman! D uh, you're gonna object right to that, aren't you? Yes. There are demons and spirits. <laughs> okay, I love that one. What, like what does that mean? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good job. Day? Good job, Herman. I'm sorry, I was too close to the microphone. That's okay. I sort of knew what you were saying. Well, I'll see you later. I'm going to leave now. Oh god. And there's that ghost who's just like sitting there. Who's? I'm the uh, um. These are short parodies, so I don't I don't think it's bad. I, I don't feel guilty for commentating over them. Um. <laughs> this is. Well, I mean, I've seen that. <laughs> uh, I've seen that joke of repeating the name of the individual cast a lot of times before, but. Oh, nice, like, uh, 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 up until, it wasn't until episode 4 that ghosts were, were immortal in the spirit world, which is weird, um, and even during uh, episode 5, excuse me, because even, and even during that, I'll say Joseph didn't make that, so, didn't make it, even after you say, after that, so, I mean, I guess you could say that, uh, I guess that does, does that mean that for eternity he's stuck in evil trance, meaning he's in hell, which is a pretty harsh punishment for what he has to endure, but because he isn't that unlikable. Um, I have no idea what's supposed to be happening here. <laughs> this is the second episode. This, uh, and of course, uh, as you can tell, this is the episode two of Ghost Hotel, imitating the very first one of Ghost M Motel. But and he can. Um... Those windows on this parody are straighter than the actual <laughs> windows in the game uh, in the original. <clears throat> and this music is good. I've never seen you here before. 
Yeah, why didn't you answer the door? Sorry. I thought you were Jehovah. God, Herman's better than I thought. You know, he should be. He's... I think he deserves to not have to fight demons for all this. people died in a car crash today. Yeah, I was the seventh. Ooh, lucky number. Here are your keys. Well, he looks kind of different from an end from that. spiders and such. From this. Oh, that yes, guy. and there's a small problem with our toilets. Well, what is it? It's something you take a shit in, sir. No, what is the problem? Surely you can fix it by tonight. Yes, sir. And don't call me Shirley. Okay, I've simply- I've, I've suddenly lost all sympathy for you, Herman. Uh, you deserve to rot in the pit of hell or whatever. Or you get put in an evil trance. I don't know if good spirits can have that happen to them by the demons, but... And I guess it's a bit what weird that uh, both him and the Riddler have legs, actually. No, no. How dare now that I'm talking you? about... How dare you no no my how dare you? You dare to the, dare uh, me? How dare you dare my how dare like, you? Like, actual original... Now, if you excuse stuff. me, I'm going upstairs. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to mouse over that for that to happen, it just happens without. That's nice, whoa. That's that's a pretty interesting, um, I forgot how cool that face looks. I think they got my room mixed up with Justin Timberlake's. Ah, well, it's better than nothing. Hello? What is that? That's scary. Kind of similar to the room that we actually saw in episode 10, weirdly enough. A little bit similar. <laughs> kind of funny. Oh boy, now I have to... That's actually sad to say, for me anyway, it's for the Ghost Mattel series. I've done this like four... This, this is the fourth time I've done it. Um, and, I, and this is the first time I've included those extras. They're end for sure this time. That's, that's actually really true of the actual thing. I'm, I'm, these are just the credits from the other games. Um, Because I, I do doubt that Ghost of 12 will ever come out. And to re-sum up my feelings on these games, I loved them when I was a kid, and I do feel they have some unique charm to them. They do have some problems that get in the way of me, like, uh, me saying that i really recommending it to people. I think Violent Aim... Uh, I haven't checked out her other work, but and I'm not, and, and to this day, I'm not sure if Wayne X Wayne Colt X is actually deserving of his title as co-founder. But uh, thank you for watching. This was very fun, although it took me a, a little while. Um, and it's probably going to take ten, take me a few days to upload this night to sideline my other projects. But you know me. Goodbye. <laughs>